record. All right, so we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I know we've got like one more minute or something, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, tonight's session is on stud Hilo. And stud is one of the stud games, of course which basically means it's it's like Raz, it's like stud high, but this is stud high low. And if you recall when we did the Omaha lessons, we first started with Omaha high, and then we did Omaha high low. And what that means is that there's two games in one. And that's exactly the same thing with stud high low. Stud high low is played exactly like stud, in how it's dealt and how the betting goes and um and how the dealer puts out the cards so just to refresh your memory this is a uh, game where everybody's dealt around it's not like a, a community card in any way there's just your own personal cards and then information cards and there's the the information cards are basically the community cards that everybody gets um or they're not community they're your cards but the information is shared with everybody who's in a hand so they see what you've got um and so a dealer basically does and i'm i'm literally going to do what we did the last time where we just delved right in and started talking about how you do this and you know uh, we'll show the different game there are the different types of hands at random and just discuss them but uh, just a real quick refresher, when you're in a stud hand or a stud game, the dealer will start the deal to, its to their left and they're gonna go around the table. Anybody who wants to play has to put up an ante. We're gonna pretend for today's purposes that this is a four, eight limit game because stud is played in a limit format. So in a stud eight, four, in a stud eight, four, eight limit game, Everybody antes to force the beginning of the pot, which is a $1 bet. So anybody who wants a hand has to put up a $1. When you put up $1, this is your, your dealer sees the, the uh, antes and then he starts dealing. <clears throat> He's gonna deal two cards down all the way around, starting from his left, and then he's gonna deal the third card up, face up. And that's the beginning of the information that everybody sees at the table. Um, and at that time, there is a calculation as to where the betting starts. In stud high-low, it's opposite. No, actually, it's the same. It's the same as stud high, in that the person who's going to bring in, which is the first, what we call the bring-in, is the first forced bet outside of the ante and it's going to be the person who has the lowest card on the table showing so real quick i'm gonna go and set up um some hands we're gonna watch them and i'm gonna turn this and, and you're gonna have to tell me donna how it looks okay sure so, um uh, again it seems like it's probably a little close to it that's better that's better uh, uh, turn it a little bit more to your right. A little bit more to your right. Get it? Well, I'll Maybe. put some cards up and then you can tell me. Good. All right. Okay. So. I just have to mention that, that we, after last, last week, I sent Lupe a message that said, please thank the cards for their random wonderfulness in our, our lesson because it was really great. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to actually deal this like if it was a dealer. So the dealer dealt one. Gosh, darn it. Okay, this is the thing, guys. I got smart and grabbed an easel instead of my chairs. So now I'm going to have, I, need, I forgot to give myself some room. Ugh. Okay, can you still see everything? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do the four. So there's one there. That's We're going to say there's four players. And they go down. Then he goes to the next person, and then to the last person. Then the dealer goes to the next person with a face down, face down, face down. Remember, all these players have already dealt. 
or ante $1 in order to receive any cards. Then the dealer's gonna go up, 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 and up. Okay. So in this situation, just to know who's gonna bring in the actual uh, start of the betting round, the lowest card, of course, is the deuce of hearts. So the deuce has to look at their whole cards to make a decision. Because remember, a deuce in high, in high stud is not very good. But when you get a deuce in low, depending on what's under, oh my gosh, I did not set this up. <laughs> I swear I did not set this up. So we're just gonna take a peek before I even start talking about this, okay? We're gonna look at everybody else's cards. Here's the 10, with a four, six. Here's the seven, with a six, three. And here's a seven, with a king, six. Okay. Now, when I start talking about um, stud being a high game and a low game. Turn your, uh, move your computer a little bit to the left. To your left, there you go, good, excellent, okay. Is that good? Yeah, but then, you know, okay. you can stick your face down here so we can see you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so what happens here in, in stud high low, quite honestly, you want to make sure, or you want to look at your low cards. It's a split game, by the way. That means that there's going to be a, uh, in all the betting, everything that goes in the middle, the, it's the, the pot will be split between a high hand and a low hand. And the objective, just like in Omaha High Low, you're going to want to scoop a low. Okay, so, so you look at things like this freaking monster hand up here. This is the ace deuce tray of hearts. Not only do you have a heart flush draw, but you have three to the best low possible because the best low possible in any low game is a wheel, which is ace, deuce, three, four. They already have three cards. This is like, a, you know, the heavens opening up and going, ah, when, you get a, when you get three cards like that. Almost like when you were um, playing stud high and you had three of a kind with only one showing and you had two hidden of the same card that's called being rolled up that's an excellent hand as well so if if let's say the deuce was the one not let's say the deuce is the one that has to bring in well because they have a really good hand under here they're going to complete it they're going to not just bring it in for one dollar they're going to go ahead and complete the bet to four all right now let's look at the next set the next cards are a four six and a ten they are not connected in any way. Um, the four six is an okay low starting hand, but it's not suited. I don't recommend playing anything that doesn't, it doesn't connect in any way. So this 10 is gonna go away. We're gonna, they're gonna say, nah, it's too much, I don't wanna play. Now you've got the seven, six, three. Now the seven, because the deuce completed it to four, is going, oh, they must have some good low cards under there. But they don't know what they are. They could just have three to a low and that'd be fine. Or let's say the deuce has pocket aces under here or the deuce has pocket kings or something like that. They have to assume that this deuce is either going low or they've got a really good pair underneath, okay? They have no idea that this is going on. But there's, there's three low cards and two flush cards and a semi-straight uh, yeah, that they could draw to um, with the, you know, if they got the four or the five, they would have, they would have a straight. And then over here, we have the seven showing again. So this person already knows that they aren't going to get a pair of sevens probably because one of their sevens is gone. They also have two connecting, but it's a big, if this was a small club, I'd say, okay. But because it's a big king and a six and a seven, go ahead and throw that card away because those are not connecting enough. Your three cards have to have some sort of a dance, okay? They have to all connect or do something together in order to stay in. So let's, we're gonna go ahead and fold these, these guys. So now 
we're heads up. Now, granted, we would have more people at the table at this time, but we're just looking at these two hands. Remember um, when the dealer gets ready to go? So this person called, they had met, this person called. Dealer Burns starts on the left and puts down a 10 and puts down a five. Okay, the, in, in stud high-low, the highest cards start the action. So the 10 did not improve. They know that the seven and the five did improve if they were going low, okay? So in this instant right here, I probably would not bet. I would check it. This person, because now they've caught one of their inside straight cards that they needed, plus they have four to low, is definitely gonna bet. So they're gonna bet $4, in this instance, let's say they want to gamble, they're going to peel off one more and they call the $4, okay? So let's go ahead and burn and turn. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh darn. Yeah. So there's a lot of information. Remember that nobody can see these two cards. Nobody can see these two cards. So the deuce and the four is the information because if this person is playing um, high-low and they understand it, they know that that 10 was a blank card for that person unless they have pocket tens under here. And, but they checked, remember? So that was not a card that they hit with. So they checked and then they called. Well, now this guy will start the action because showing is pocket fives. They've got the highest hand at this point. So right now, if I were this person with the pocket fives, I would look at these cards and say, oh, that person is probably just going low. You know, and I have a low, I have a seven low going on so far, four cards. But now with this one being a four card as well, a four, uh, um, an additional low card, they probably have in their minds a low as well the same at least lo level of low being four cards but instead you definitely are trying to do low high cards does that make sense you want to go for that wheel you want to go for that low flush you want to go for that low straight because it's gonna probably scoop um, both the high and the low so in this instance because the fives are showing the five is probably, but remember the five is the card that they needed for that, 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 that steel wheel, uh, a suited ace, deuce, three, four, five. But that's okay. That's still a really damn good, it's the best sec low that they can, that could be out there. Two of the fives are gone, but if they pick up a six or, or even a seven, um, that would, would at least give them a seven, four, or a six, four, um, three, deuce, ace. But remember one of the sevens was gone. It's, remember what I said in the other the other information? You have to remember the cards that were were um, thrown in, that were mocked. So we know that one of the sevens is gone. We're thinking up here that they have at least a seven low going on, but now they picked up a pair. They're betting out. We don't know if they have two pair now, or if they have three fives, or if they have, uh, you know, four low cards. They have to at least assume that the fives are better than their cards, right? Because they have the high hand. At this point, they're at least guaranteed that they're gonna get half the pot because they have a pocket pair, or they have a pair, not a pocket pair, but a pair, and they don't have any pairs at all, okay? So let's go ahead and see six straight. Oh, and the other thing is, is instead, by Fifth Street, you need to make your decision whether you're going to continue or you're going to fold. It is absolutely imperative. Do not chase at this point. Although this one is like a, because it's a four card nut flush, because it's a four card nut low, go ahead and chase that one. Okay. But normally you don't want to start chasing after Fifth Street. So here's, okay, this burn, we're going to go up here. Terrible card. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And, okay, this is a really good card for that, for that hand. Do you see how this went from a monster to a shitty cards? Because they did not improve. And we know that this is now an eight, 
five, seven, for sure they have a low because it's an eight qualifier. It has to be eight low, eight and lower. They could even have a straight at this point. So this person's going to check. Oh no, this one is actually going to bet it out because they have the, the, the pair showing they are first to act. They're going to bet it out. If I were you, I would fold. If there were a whole bunch of people in the, um, in the pot and the pot was pretty good and you wanted to gamble a little bit, just remember it's four, we're playing four, eight. It was $4 for the bring in, which is here. It was $4 for four or third, third street, then fourth street and then fifth, sixth, seventh are all $8. So you're gonna have to gamble another eight bucks. Now it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but let's say you're playing 10, 20 or you're playing, you know, um, 2040. Now you're not just putting in $40, you're putting in $80. So don't think of it at the limit, just think of it as your game. Do you, would you want to play this game? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead for this demonstration purpose, go ahead and say that they called, but I don't want you calling that, okay? Here we go. Earned, turned. Oh my gosh. This monster hand turned into absolute crap. They don't even have a low because you have to have five cards that are under eight gone. They, nothing. They, they threw away their eight bucks. And this card, look at they got picked up, you know, trips. And then they also have an eight low, which is a, a phenomenal hand instead high low. That will probably, if nothing else, give you a half the pot, if not the whole pot. That's a scooper. In this in demonstration, that's a scooper. Okay, any questions? How we doing? I'm gonna take these off. Yes, please, please, uh, you know, put in your questions. I, I, I think this is really kind of fun because just doing it random dealing, that's terrific, rather than setting the cards. Yeah, this is what happens. You know, this is what happens when you're playing the game. You can start off with monster freaking cards for your high and your low, like that, that, uh, three cards to the nut flush steel wheel, and it wound up being the, the worst cards you can get. You got a brick, brick, and a brick. I'm gonna um, mute real quick so I can shuffle these and not make a whole bunch of sound, and then you guys can chat real quick, and sure, I'll be right back. Yeah, um, and I went ahead and uh, put, put your questions here, because sometimes, depending on your computer, you're going, where, where do I chat? Where do I put the questions? So if you have some questions, um, you know, tell us, put in the, the chat box, how did you like that? How did that help? Uh, was it something that helps your game? Do you get the idea of where we're going in relationship to what's important? With draw hands, draw heavy hands, hands that you, you want to go ahead and fold earlier than you then you might want to, you know, holding on longer is, is, is probably the biggest problem that people have in poker. You know, I've, it, Sandy says it helps a lot. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, are you going to go ahead and deal like you're supposed to deal or are you just going to do the deal like that? Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if it's going to be random, let's... Can you see what I did? <laughs> I'm the dealer. I'm supposed to be sitting right here. So let's do it the way it was supposed to be done. Yeah, please, yes, please, yes. <laughs> okay, everybody emptied up and the dealer took out their antis in and now he's dealing out. Okay, I'm going to be the third hand. This one? Yeah, I'll be that one. Okay. Which one are you going to be? I'll be the five. Okay. Okay, just just cut. Okay, so these are all low cards, which is... And stud high low, depending on what they have underneath, pretty much a lot of these people are going to stay in. Because remember, we're going for a high uh, and a low hand. And right now we're going to peek and see what they've got. At this moment, the dealer is going to ask the three of hearts to do the bring in. They Remember, they can bring it in for $1 to start the action. Or if they've got really good cards under there, they can bring it all the way up and call it complete and complete to the $4. So let's just take a peek real quick, see what everybody has. Uh 
Okay, here we go. So the three looks at their, because they know that they have to bring in right now. They have three cards to an eight low. That means they have three low qualifying. I believe that the three is going to go ahead and complete it and make it $4. It's not my favorite move, but that happens all the time. Whenever people have three to a low, they go ahead and just start the bidding because they know if somebody else doesn't have three to a low, they're going to get out. Okay. So Donna, what are you going to do? Well, my hand is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Right. Uh, it's a, a disconnected straight. There's, uh, you no know, suits, a rainbow. No uh, so I'm out of there. Okay. Donna folded. Good girl. Yeah. <laughs> now you come over to seven, six, six. They have a pair and they have a seven, six, which is two to a low and they have two to a straight. They're going to call. Okay. You come up here. And you've got pocket fives and two to a flush, but they're not connected. Me personally, because there's a six showing, I have to assume that they're higher than me already. Just, I just do. Uh, me personally, I'm folding this. Do me I feel, do you see a lot of people playing this? Yes, you do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you do. But that's the kind of people you want in your game because they're playing terribly and you're usually going to win money from them. But um, in this instance, I'm just going to say that they said, yes, I'm going to play. So they called the, the $4. Okay. So let's take and see what the, what the dealer did. He burns. And the second information card is a nine of hearts, a jack of spades, and a nine of diamonds. Okay. So ugly one. cards all around. <laughs> they are ugly cards all around. As a matter of fact, the nine knows the other nine is probably gone. So they're like, that's terrible. Um, the, the high card is going to start the betting and that's going to be the Jack over there. They, they still have three to a low, which is crap, but with now when you have four cards and they have three to a flush and we all know about a three card flush, not being that hot, they're probably going to check. This person's going to look at this and go, I only have a pair of sixes. I have a one gap or two in a, in a, in a possible straight moving on here, but they're, it's a shitty straight. You know, it's, it's not even a big one. It's a nine. And we know that one of the nines is already gone. So they're probably going to check two. And this one is lucky because it's going to get a freaking free card. Okay. So they got a free card. Nobody bet in that because everybody got a terrible card. Remember, you don't put your money in if you have improved your hand or let somebody else, or, you know, sometimes you're going to get the aggressive players, but for demonstration sakes, we're only going to keep that rule in hand that if your hand improved, you, you do it. Okay. The next card, ace, ace, four. Okay. So right now the ace jack has the first action. That is looking, hmm. They've got four to a low with an ace. Okay, this is my rule, my own personal rule. The only time that you should be an aggressive person in a situation like this is if you have the ace. Okay, if that would have came out a four or something and still gave you a uh, four to the low, I would have checked it. If you have an ace, go ahead and be aggressive. All right comes back down to over here. They got a four. Now they've got three to a low. They still have, you know, the, the nine. I mean, they need a five and they need an eight. They know that one of the fives is gone because they got that information right there. The likelihood of getting that gapper, eh, pretty, pretty weak. Okay. In my recommendation, that one should bet, this one should fold, and this one should fold because there's nothing connecting this at all. Okay, they shouldn't have been in the hand anyway. They got a free card. But for demonstration sakes, we're going to say that that one over there went ahead and bet. This one said, I'm going to gamble. They, they, they bet or they called. This one really, they have no business being in. We're going to go ahead and let them go ahead and fold. Okay, so now we have just the two players left. Burn. Turn. Turn. Um, this one at this point is going to check. And the reason that they're going to check is they have a pair of eights. 
a pair of eights is nothing. This 10 could have given them a pair higher or the nine could have given them a, high, a, pair, a higher pair because they stayed in, remember? <laughs> that hand did not improve, they should check. This one did not improve either, they should check. Neither one of those people have any business betting because nobody has a made low yet and they only have a pair of eights, okay? And they only have a pair of sixes. So let's go ahead and give them their final card. Remember the, the river card is always face down. So let's take a peek and see what happened. They got a nine and they got a three. They missed, they missed their low. They'd only have four cards in the low. They have an eight, a three, a deuce and an ace. So it was looking real good, but it never improved. The nine, nines instead, as well as um, ha, uh, Omaha, they're terrible cards. They're usually blanks. Nines suck. Um, so they would check and they would check right behind them. This one would win with this pair of eights and this one would be complaining. Oh my gosh, I had a four card, this one, whatever, whatever, right? They always say. And then they, the, the pot would go over there. Um, remember, please, if I give, if they give you any kind of pearls of wisdom, do not, that is expensive. It's an expensive game. Do not stay in if your card did not improve your hand. Bottom line. Fold early and then often. Yes. You would fold more in stud high-low than you would in, um, in hold'em, probably. And stud was, regular stud was what I learned to play with. And I think that's one of the things that really helped to develop a good foundation for my game. Okay, I'm, I'm muting again. Okay, go ahead and mute. Okay, uh, so the fourth card is face up. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, the fourth card. Uh, you have two, the first two cards are down. Then the first two are down. Then three, four, five, and six are up. And then the seventh is down. So in the, in the game, there are three cards that are down, the first two and the last one, and the ones in between are up. Any other questions? Please keep the questions coming. I like questions. Is that how it's done in Raz? Yes, it is. Yes, dealt, dealt like that. Yes, it is. You look like you're looking at us. <laughs> oh, I know, I'm like, that's because my little controls are over that away. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Ah, that's so cute. <laughs> so, um, God, exactly. These are stud games. Raz, stud, and stud high low, and low ball. Um, well, low ball and raz are basically the same. But um, they are all dealt the same way. Um, and the bring in is always based off of either if it's a low game we're playing, it's the high that brings it in. If it's a high low game, it's the low that brings it in or if it's a high game the low bring did i did i even make sense the low brings it in twice in the stud high low and in the stud high the the low card showing okay we're gonna do this again everybody emptied their dollar and we dealt it around okay so you play two of the hands and i'll play two of the hands okay i'm gonna be the top two you be the bottom two okay okay but I can reach the top ones. <laughs> Smarty pants. <laughs> okay. The next card is called the door card, technically, but I call it the information card because it's the very first piece of information that the rest of the table can see. Okay. In this instance, who brings it in? I do the fourth, the bottom left. Yes, the lowest card, and that would be the deuce of spades. But before we do that, let's take a pick, peek at everybody's hand. And evaluate them. That sucked. <laughs> oh, seven, six, four. Are those three clubs up there? Yes, and three clubs. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. Well, thanks okay. for dealing with me, crap. <laughs> right? 
in, this is going to be the fastest canned known to man. Basically, what's going to happen is the deuce is going to bet out their $1, because this is crap underneath here. They aren't even going to try and attempt to bluff at anything. They're going to bring in their one. Don't bluff in this instance, because you only have one card for your information. All right. So she brings it in for $1. I look at this hand. Big, middle, little. I hate big, middle, little. Always, always, always fold big, middle, little. One big card, one middle card, one little card. Bye-bye. And I predict your second hand that you're going to raise. You're going to complete it. Yeah, you're I'm going to definitely complete it because I have three cards that are connectors for a straight, semi-straight, three cards that are under an eight low, and three cards that are to a flush. Right? That's a monster right there in a starting hand. Okay? This I'm bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. And this one, bye bye. Bye bye. And there, you know, and you should be happy to just take it down and get no collars. Um, you're getting all the antis from the, the game in play. And sometimes that's good enough. It's kind of like picking up the blinds in a round. Because instead, it's the same calculation as it is in, um, in Hold'em, in that in order for you to be. Uh, to break even, you have to pick up the blinds at least once every round in order for you to um, sustain your, your pocketbook, okay? So that was one of those instances. You picked up the, the antis in that round, and that helps you when you get to your next um, bet, betting round so that you have money. Okay, I'm going to mute again because that was a terrible one. I'm going to do one more. Well, no, that's just, you know, that's life. That's poker. Okay, come on. Give me some questions here. Tell us how you how we're doing. Is this fun? Are you enjoying it? Um, I am. This is a lot of fun here. I never thought I'd be playing. Um, yeah, kitchen table poker from Florida to Las Vegas. <laughs> Play live cards. I wonder if we could actually do that. <laughs> Look at it, PayPal, a, a buy-in. <laughs> no, everybody had to see everybody else's cards. It didn't work. <laughs> Sherry says, yes, thank you, ladies. I certainly appreciate the info. I sure am glad you um, Actually, you can do it, Donna. <laughs> you can do what you do. And it's called something. I'm trying to remember what it is. It's where all the cards are all set up exactly the same on every table in the tournament. Have you ever seen that? No. Oh, yeah. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, every hand, every deck is set up and so that everybody receives the same hands and you see how they get played differently. Wow. Cool. Cool. The, quest the question was, Sandy said, what happens if all eight players stay until the end? That's 56 cards and there's only 52 in the deck. <laughs> okay. What happens at that point is the burn cards, you saw the, the dealer had a little stack of burn cards. He's going to stop where he runs out of cards. He's going to shuffle all the cards together and then, you know, do a cut. And then that's where he completes the rest of the cards. So there is enough cards. And I don't believe I have ever, ever, ever been in a step game where all eight players stayed all the way to the river. Well, I, I did. That's how I learned. Remember, it was 25 cent, 50 cent poker, and the pot froze at $10 in, oh. in Florida. And that's after the house had taken $2.50 off the top. Think about that. And by the way, you guys, she's not in the hurricane zone. That's, that's right. It passed me. Yeah. So she, it skipped over them, and now it's going to the you know, the other side of the pan, the panhandle, is that what they call that? Yeah, it's straight up. It's, yeah. This panhandle is straight up. And Robert, Roberta said, have you ever seen that happen? And yes, we did. It, it happened all the time in, uh, in Florida. Uh, I started playing in 1996, and that was when there was 25 cent, 50 cent poker in Florida. That's all there was with the Seminoles. Yeah. Stud is not an easy game to find. Only if it's in a horse game or if it's in a rose game um, or an eight game mix, then you'll find stud. But by itself, it's almost never, unless you've got uh, a carter that caters to very old players. <laughs> and Sandy said Georgia now, that's correct. The, the hurricane is uh, uh, about uh, three hours ago. Uh, this is about 10 o'clock uh, Pacific. Uh, excuse me, 10, 10 o'clock Eastern right now. And uh, about three hours ago, 
uh, about four hours ago, it had already done a landfall, the panhandle, and it had spread out so far about 300 miles so that it was actually, there were uh, tornadoes that were in the lead zone in front of it. They were actually tornadoes in Atlanta. That's awful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which ones are you playing this time? I'll play at the top, you play at the bottom. Okay. Okay, in this instance, there are no low cards showing. Uh, there's no qualifying, it has to be eight or lower, but still the smallest card on deck will be the, the bring in card. In this point, it's the nine of spades. But before we do that, let's just go ahead and peek and see what everybody got. Four, six, clean. A three, deuce, clean. Oh, and Sherry said, that, oh, she's in Georgia, yes. Debbie said, uh, good luck in the storm, absolutely. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. You dealt some doozies there, darling. They're absolutely crap cards, guys. I mean, they really are. So you, you talk about your hand um, there. Okay, so I'm bringing it in because I've got the lowest showing card, which is the nine of spade, and I'm going to bring it in for the minimum of a buck. One dollar, right? One dollar, right. And my, uh, my second hand, I have a king showing. I'm looking at what else I have, and I have nothing. Right. It's Big, rainbow. Middle, little, bleh. Crap. You know, Gold. and I'm out of there. And I look at the same thing and I go, oh my gosh, I got a big, I got two to a low. It's only a dollar though. I got two speeds. I'm feeling kind of cheeky. I'm going to pay that one <laughs> big dollar. Same thing over here. I know the queen's no good, right? But I do have a deuce tray of, of uh, spades and that's a pretty decent low. I'm going to call the one dollar. Let's just see what happens. Cool. So, let's burn. Oh, the queen picked up a five. The queen picked up an eight. And pocket nines. Yay! Yeah, ass cards became decent cards. Okay, why did it become decent cards, even if those were information? Because the queens know that they don't have queens because there's two queens already out there, right? And so most likely they don't have another queen underneath. You have to assume that, especially since they did not complete it. Okay, so now what's going to happen, Donna? You're bring, you're, you're you got a pair of nines. I'm going to bet out. Okay, she's going to bet out now. Let me explain something, and I don't think I covered this in our last um, seminar. In stud high, if there is a pocket pair, or that on like the nine, there was the 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 door card which was a nine, and then the second card was a nine, giving her a, a, a door, like right out the door, a pocket pair. Or I don't want to say pocket, but, but, but a pair. In stud high only, at that moment, because this is four, eight limit, remember? That is the only time that you can actually make it an eight-handed bet, or an eight-dollar bet. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Instead high only. Now, instead high low, it does not apply. But instead high, it does. They can, they can make that an $8 bet because they have a pair showing on the, on the on third street, fourth street. Okay, so she bets out. I look up and I went, oh, shoot, now I got a four, five, six. Still have a crappy queen. Okay, I'm going to call. And I look over here. I have an eight high this is a five, and let's say that in my heart I'm saying, okay, over here, they probably have better low cards than I do, even though I have a three deuce, and eight is still is too high above that, that five. So this hand has to go at this point. It's just, I'm not putting any more money in, okay? Shouldn't have been there for the first time, for that one dollar anyway. Okay, now the dealer's are gonna burn. We're gonna turn up, got a jack. Got a five. Okay, Donna, what are you gonna do and why? I'm gonna bet out. She's gonna bet out, absolutely. And why is she betting out? Because this is crap. <laughs> and because she has a pair of nines and she has three to a low. Um, that three to a low is really not what she's looking at. It's really the nines. And even up here, there's it's a jack, they're unsuited, it's just terrible. So 
At this point, she's going to bet out, you need to go away. The other thing is, is that this was a five. That means that this five was probably not paired under here, okay? So that information that she saw, she knew that that was not a card I needed. So that one needs to go away. And Donna scoops the pot. Yay! Yes, and there was no split. It was a scoop. Okay. All right. With nines, and I absolutely agree with you that nines are dreadful cards. They are. They absolutely are. I guess the only worst card, it has to be Jack and Jacks and Hold'em because I call them pretend face cards. <laughs> they are. They are. So I'm going to mute so I can do this one more time. Is is everybody getting it? Okay, over here. Let's see. What did she say? Commerce is. What is her read? What she said. Uh, Commerce and the bike have have stud. And uh, uh, come on, talk to me. G give me some. Give me some words here to read. Uh, I hate Jacks and Hold'em, Sherry. Absolutely. Jacks are pretend face cards. You op I have overvalued Jacks in terrible situations, and that's why I call them pretend face cards, and you are welcome to use my moniker for, for Jacks. <laughs> Sherry says it's her, her nemesis. <laughs> I'm um, actually going to take one more second. I'm I'm in a corner that has no air. I'm going to turn my little fan around so I don't die in the corner. So, oh, see if I can get around all these wires and things I got going on here, too. Let me know, though, if it's too loud, okay? If it's yep. too loud, I'll turn it down. Can you hear that? Nope. Yay. Okay, I get to keep my fan. All right, so let's do one more hand. This is really fun for me. I, I hope everybody else is enjoying it. Yeah, really, really yeah, fun. And you know, and the reality, this is our last class of the series, and I'm kind of sad. It's like, oh. And then we got to figure out when we can start playing together. So, here we go. Here's down, 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 and down, 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 down. Here comes the door card, the information card, seven, six, five, <laughs> Jack. Okay. Okay, so I get to start again, but show us the down cards, please. Yeah, let's have the down cards. That's a pretty ugly hand. Yeah. That's equally ugly hand. Not a bad hand. <laughs> Okay, so I have uh, pocket aces and a five. So she has two to a flush, two to a low, and the best pocket pair in poker. So what are you going to do, Donna? Well, I'm going to complete. I'm going to come out at four. She's coming out at four bucks. Um, evaluation of these hands. Pocket threes are terrible, of course. Even if she had pocket fives, she's got me beat, right? Don't get married to any pocket pairs. Even if you have two, uh, two flush, there's nothing coordinating about this, and it's a terrible pocket pair. Go ahead and fold that. Oh, I just folded for you, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I would have folded. <laughs> so again, yeah. I'll fold. For, I'll fold for you up there. Only a seven four two for the low with a ten of diamonds and a four of diamonds. That's not enough to keep you in. You got to get rid of that. That's got to go. Coming over here, we have a seven six. Even if the six looks at that and goes, yeah, I've got a seven and two, you know, a heart. They know okay. that. Oh, come on, just go ahead and peel a card off since it's our last hand. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna peel a card. But I would have been gone too. Yeah. That thing I know you're really gonna be gone. Okay. At this point, the queen is going to start. They're going to check and they're going to bet and they're going to fold. Yep. There's just nothing there. Nothing at all. There's, it's too many cards to chase to find a hand. There's, even if you try to go spades or you try to go hearts or if you try to do a straight or if you try to do a low or if you try nothing. I mean, there's really nothing there. So at this point, these guys go away and the aces and 
the three card flush takes the point. Yay! Yeah, yay! Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna turn the thing around because I kind of wanted to do. Oh, hold on. Let me sit down and not break my neck before I turn it around. Um. Okay, so we've covered five different games. We covered Omaha High, Omaha High Low, Raz, which is all low, Stud High, and this is Stud High Low. They're all really fun games. And if you can pick one, if it's a dealt in your local par card room, or even if you have a group of girlfriends or even you know friends that want to get together and learn some of this, I recommend that you do that. Even if it's just you know four or five people, get go ahead and uh, you know plan a little potluck with your buds, and say, listen, we're gonna we're gonna really delve into one of the games. You pick which one it is you want to do. Uh, my recommendation is to start with Omaha High. And that's only because PLO is played with that, and that's very popular in the industry right now. And uh, it's an easier game to read when you're coming off of learning, of knowing Hold'em, because you already know, you know, what makes a straight, what makes a flush, what makes a this, what makes a that. The only thing is, is remember you wanna find all of those, you wanna find four cards that are dealt to you that are coordinated to make that, to be able to make that go. So. Um, what does she say? Stud high low mm -hmm. equals rad and raz and stud high. Yeah. No. No. I'm sorry. The, yes. let me, the reason it's not is because in raz the high could be a jack. There's no qualifier. Oh. Oh. Okay. And in stud high low or in Omaha high low, there's an eight qualifier. It has to have an eight or lower. Five cards. Eight or lower. Does that make sense? Rad, rad. Okay. So um, that is my recommendation. Again, you can always, I put these back up on the WPA.poker website. You can review them anytime you want. You can start them and stop them. Um, and then I want you to go to YouTube and look it up there too and say how do you play this or strategy on this and you'd be surprised how much information is really out there there's also a couple of, of books um, that i recommend and um, one of them is super system there's a um it's the Doyle brunson book uh there's a big R, uh, section that todd brunson wrote and he's a really good stud player okay he's a good mixed game player but He's a really good stud player. <laughs> um, I recommend that you read, you know, some of those. And there's another one that was, um, let me see which one it is here. If I think I wrote it down. I don't know where I, my little note is. Ah, and then there's another one on um, Ray Z's book on the high-low split poker for advanced players. Don't, you know, once you learn the, the, how the mechanics are, you guys already know poker. You already know what, what wins. The only thing you got to get good at is, is the low and remembering that there needs to be five cards to that low. And one of the things in, um, in stud is that, or stud high low rather, is that um, you can make your, your, your low and that down card at the, on the river can give somebody a lower low. And you know that's just the way it goes. Let's say let's say you wound up with a seven six low, and they pulled up a five on the river, so they went to seven five low, and you get beat. But um, try 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 when you are looking at stud that you're looking for hands that are um, low straight cards. You know like three x four x five x or four, five, six X or five, six, seven X, you know, with, and, and it's even stronger if it's suited. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have, let's say you have a three, four, five of clubs, that's a monster starting hand in um, stud high low. Cause you have three to a straight, three to a flush and three to a low. 
those are definitely your starting hands. Um, if you, by chance, get rolled up in stud high-low, um, you know, like you've got three, three of a kind, and your door card is a nine, and your two bottom cards are nines, that's also a monster. Um, but if you're gonna do this, the, the same thing, if you're gonna calculate the higher hands, you wanna have either a high pair or you're gonna wanna have three to, um, three to a straight, same thing basically, but on the high end. And I'm talking face cards. You wanna have, you know, like a Jack, Queen, King of Spades or something like that. Um, it's almost not enough to have um, straight cards in the higher end because so many people are gonna be chasing the low cards that a, a lot of the straight cards fall into this, those lower straights and they become valuable to them because they're, they're going for a low and a straight. I don't even know if I'm making sense to you guys. But um, that's, in my opinion, to play stud high-low, you want to look for the potential hands that give you a straight, a flush, and lows in your starting hands. Would you agree with that, Donna? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because you want to have options. You want to have as many options as possible. The hand needs to be tight. It needs to be close together. Um, you don't want a lot of gaps. And you want the to realize that you are going to, you know, fold as, as early as possible. And uh, Lene said, how valuable are pairs? It depends on the size of the pairs. Um, let's put it this way. Let's say... Let's say all, you know, all the cards were dealt out and everybody shows a low card. Let's just say your pair, if it's, you know, jacks are better, is strong for a minute. Okay. It's only strong for a minute. Let's say you got pocket jacks underneath and you've got, um, give me something else, a 10. Let's just say that, that's pretty decent. It's, it's, it's a strong starting, but remember that that 10 needs to be coordinated too, because this is a game of options. And you wanna see how many options you're gonna have with those three cards. Now granted, if you have three of a kind dealt to you, that is a monster. That is a raising hand for sure. Um, but I would rather have an ace, deuce, tray of spades in my three, and I think that that's a much stronger hand than even rolled up whatever's, okay? Because my, my opportunity for a flush and my opportunity for a straight and the low is much, much stronger. I have a lot more outs than you do. So um, when you get pairs in your hands, if they're the low pairs and they have nothing coordinating, let's say like that one that I think it was pocket threes and there was a queen that was dealt <laughs> out, throw that away. It's not valuable. It, Pairs don't have the same strength in stud high low that they do in stud high or even in hold them. Um, you know, I mean, even if you play pocket threes and hold them and you're cheeky and you go ahead and play it and then you flop a three on that, then that makes it a real strong hand. Um, Sandy asked you to redefine rolled up. Oh, rolled up. Okay. Rolled up means that you have the three cards, your two down cards and your door card. I'm not flipping you off. That is my ring finger. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got your two down cards and then your third card, the up card, they're all three the same. So let's say they're all three nines or all three sevens or all three jacks or whatever they are. It's three, they're trips. Trips means rolled up. It means you were rolled up underneath. And also as, as you progress, let's say all of a sudden you've got quads, the, the next card that comes out, let's say I had three nines, and then the fourth card that I got was a nine. Well, now I got quads. That's, that's also, you, you, it's kind of like saying, um, you know, you were open-ended, or you, you had the four card flush, or you know, it's just one of those terms. But rolled up is when you have trips in the gate. Um, so what's, yeah. it, what's it called on, the, is there a name for it with the fourth card when you have quads, get quads all of a sudden? Is there a name for it other than hallelujah? Right. Um, I don't, I don't recall there being one, 
but man, that is sweet when it happens because nobody can tell. They already know that you probably have trips, but they rarely know that you have quads. It's just the, the, the odds of it happening are. <laughs> Roberta, Roberta says payday. Right. Yeah, and you, you hope people stay in. You don't want to split split the pot by any means, but you do want people to stay in. But one of the things I found is that in stud, in stud high low, it is generally foolish to soft play. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion of that, Lupe? I totally agree. Don't do that. You want to most definitely um you, the only time you're going to soft play is when you got those quads under there and you see a whole bunch of little cards around that somebody's going to bet. And then maybe that person's got the ace, two, three, four underneath is going to raise. You're going to keep raising. You just push your cards. That's the only time you're going to really like make sure that you know you're going to get a bet out of that if you see all those little cards. And then you can maximize with the raise. I'm going to mute you real quick because I need to say something to my honey. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, and please go ahead and we only have a few minutes left. Go ahead and any final questions and be sure to tell Lupe how wonderful she is. And you can pat me on the back too, I'll take one. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, I, I know that this is kind of like our weekly get together and I'm gonna miss you guys, but um, you know, please understand that you can go to the WPA group page or you can go, well, not so much on the event page page because I'm going to kind of, it, it won't show back up into your feed anymore. But if you have a question at all about a mixed game and you want to even talk about a hand that you were in or um, one that you witnessed or whatever, just go ahead and write down all the, the information and then, you know, post it up and we'll have a discussion about it. Because um, I truly believe in order to be an excellent poker player, you need to know more than one game. So it's time to expand your repertoire. I'm extremely proud of you all for taking that step to actually saying, okay, you know, I'm going to tiptoe into this mixed game stuff and uh, see what's out there. I personally am much more comfortable in mixed games than I am in Hold'em, which shocks the heck out of me. But this weekend, I was fortunate enough to spend time with a group of girls up in Lake Tahoe, and I and they're I would say probably out of the 10, eight of them are masters in Hold'em. And at least four of them are masters in all mixed games because I was playing with Jan Fisher and Linda Johnson. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> and, um, and it was enlightening to me to see the, the myriad of skill sets in those 10 players. And we even had a new gal who has only ever played Hold'em in a home game. So um, it was fun, you know, it was fun. Now granted she, she wound up, you know, going out first usually in our little tournament, but we, we did choose one night and we played Omaha to teach some of the people who were not Omaha players at all the game. And it was interesting and it was fun. And I suggest that you grab a few friends and do the exact same thing. And you can learn all about, you know, this, so. So let, let me give you the, the comments. Yes, Roberta, there are seven cards dealt. That's one of the reasons it's originally called seven card stud. So you get seven cards dealt. Sandy says, love you both. Love you all too. Thank you. Thank you. And Sherry thank says, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you Saturday in Vegas. Yeah, Sherry baby. Says, we'll be here. Yes. We're having the garden party at the Jen and Linda's house for the 300 club members. So if you're a 300 club member and you would like to join us, just let me show, make sure you're there because they live in a gated community. I got to put you on the list to get you through. Yeah, I went a little far away for commute. I'm so sorry not to be just, there. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're lucky if you have any airs, airlines flying out right now. Yeah, that's true. That's I true. Debbie, Debbie yeah. says, thank you both for providing the instructions for the various games. And Lene says, thank you, kindly ladies. And thank it has you. been wonderful. I did want to say one quick thing um, is this is seven card stud and seven there, there in five card stud, there's five cards dealt out and that's what you play period. Then there's five card draw where you actually can throw away your cards. And this is the one you see in the movies, the old movies where they would say, I'll take three cards, you know, or I'll take two. That's cards. a that's sick awesome. game. It is a sick game. And 
that is a whole nother beast that we aren't going to get into. I just wanted you to be aware of the games that are played right now in most, um, you know, as far as mixed games go, you at least will get to the horse games and that's the Hold'em, the, um, H O that is study. So uh, this was just an introductory course. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're going to sign off right now, but uh, if you have any questions, don't forget to go to the WPA.poker uh, or not WPA. I'm sorry, to the Facebook group page for Women's Poker Association. And that's our discussion page. And Donna, thank you so much for co-hosting with me. Donna from biggirlpoker.com. You can check out her website. And she is also our host for our third Thursday talks, which this this one that's coming up is going to be very interesting. She's an author, um, and she's written a book about about uh, girls uh, poker, girls and women in poker. So definitely check that out. So to everybody, good night, and we'll see you at the tables. Good night to all, Donna Blevins, Big Girl Poker. Good night. Good night, Lupe. Good night. Love you, darling. Love you more. How can I shut this thing down? Okay, goodbye. I'm gonna close it. <laughs>